All right, so let's look at this one. Um, and so you can see that uh, I've, I've added this picture. This is from the book. This problem is from the book. You know, most of these problems are in the book. Um, and this figure really helps us to visualize uh, exactly what's going on uh, for this uh, refrigeration cycle. All right, so this is a Carnot refrigeration cycle. Uh, it's executed in a closed system in saturated liquid vapor mixture using 0.8 kilograms of refrigerant 134A as working fluid. The maximum minimum temperatures are negative 8 and 20. Um, it's known that refrigerant is saturated liquid at the end right here of the heat rejection process, and the network in the cycle is 15 kilojoules. Determine the uh, fraction of mass of the refrigerant vaporizes during the process and the pressure at the end of the heat rejection process. Okay, so um, let's let's kind of talk about this diagram right here um, and this QL and QH. So the QL from a refrigerator that is absorbed from the food, the the, the you know from the um, area inside of the refriger refrigerator, it is absorbed by the working fluid, by the refrigerant. So this QL goes from the refrigerated space into, right here, into the refrigerant, making it, um, well, well, the temperature doesn't change, but it expands, isothermal expansion. This is Carnot, that's why this, this stays at eight degrees. Uh, but it expands, and think about the quality here. You know, if that, I don't know, maybe maybe that has a quality of 0.2 now, maybe it has a quality of 0.8 or something. Uh, some of the working fluid uh, is going from liquid to vapor, right? Some of it is vaporizing from 1 to 2. Uh, some of it is, yeah, e evaporating. This is the evaporator. This is the evaporator. Uh, part of the refrigeration cycle. This would be the compressor. This is the condenser, right? And this is the maybe the throttling valve right here from four back to one. Um, all right, it is the evaporator because some of the working fluid, the refrigerant, evaporates. Uh, it goes from liquid to a gas because it's accepting that QL right here from the refrigerated space. So the fraction of mass that vaporizes from one to two right there is what it is asking for. Uh, okay, that's what, that's what we're gonna get to. All right, but we're not, we've got a few steps to go. All right, uh, sometimes if I don't know what to do, I like to re rewrite, reiterate what it is telling me. Um, TH is 20 degrees C. TL, negative 8 degrees C. The work in, 15 kilojoules. Can I find, what, what can I find? Can I find the QL or QH? Can I find the coefficient of performance, even though it doesn't ask for it? This is what I like to do sometimes. Um, this might be going a roundabout way. I can find the coefficient of performance. I, well, sometimes I just look for equations that I know I can solve for something from it. All right, so I know that for a Carnot refrigerator, uh, 1 over TH over TL minus 1, and if I've got TH, TL, then I can find COP. Uh, so this is 1 over, let's see, uh, 20 plus 273, negative 8, plus 273, minus 1, 1 over that, 9.464. Uh, and I have another equation for a coefficient of performance of refrigerator, and that is the QL over the W net, or the WN. So, now that I know this, and I know that I can get the QL, that's how I do it. Uh, there may be other ways, uh, but if you have two equations for the same thing, I've had equation for coefficient, two equations for coefficient of performance, use the first one to find it, and use it in the second one, 9.464 equals QL over 15 kilojoules, QL, 
142 kilojoules. All right, so it didn't ask for that exactly, but that is the QL that the refrigerant, the working fluid, uh, absorbs during this process, this evaporator, the evaporation process from one to two when some of the, some of the fluid's going from a liquid to a vapor. All right, so if I know that is the amount of heat absorbed by the refrigerant, and I know that the refrigerant is staying at negative eight, staying as a mixture at negative eight, and parts of it is, some of it is vaporizing uh, to a gas still at negative eight, how can I find the Q? How can I find the heat transfer? Think about the latent heat of vaporization. All right. The latent heat of vaporization or the latent enthalpy, enthalpy of vaporization. I didn't write that right. The Q is going to be M. You can think of it as M delta H if you could find H1 and H2, or just the mass of the liquid that changes to vapor times the HFG, the delta H, the change in enthalpy of the vapor and the liquid at that temperature. So this uh, is the mass of liquid that vaporizes And this is the HFG at negative 8 degrees C for refrigerant. All right. So for refrigerant, if I go to table, uh, let's see, uh, at this temperature, uh, A11, I believe, because it's refrigerant, I could find the HFG 204.59 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's the difference in the HG and the HF. And so that is every little bit of liquid that is going from the eight, from F to G has to be absorbing that much enthalpy, absorbing that much heat, okay? So if we take the amount of mass that goes from liquid to vapor, times the change in each one of those enthalpy as it goes from liquid to vapor, then we can find the Q, or then we can have the Q, and that is the QL that we just found, okay? All right, so this equation right here, uh, this equation right here is true <clears throat> for Carnot refrigerants uh, that are vaporizing, and this is just the mass of the liquid that, vaporizes times the HFG at that temperature. Okay, so if I know this is 142 kilojoules equals the mass that vaporizes times the difference in its enthalpy when it vaporizes, um, and look at the units here. Yeah, that would make sense of this mass being kilograms. The mass is 0.694 kilograms. That is the mass, okay, not exactly what I asked for, but that is the mass that vaporizes. Mass that vaporizes. Okay, man, I'll try to explain this one last time. It's staying at negative uh, 8 degrees C. Some of it is going from liquid to vapor. Every bit that goes from liquid to vapor needs to accept 204.54 kilojoules per kilogram. And so if I know that it accepts 142 kilojoules, then how many kilograms accepted that 204? Uh, it's 0.694. That's the mass that goes from liquid to vapor. The question asks for the fraction, fraction of the mass that vaporizes out of the total 0.8. Uh, so 0.694, <coughs> 0.694, kilograms over 0.8, so 0.868 uh, or 86.8 percent of the mass uh, vaporizes when it accepts that QL.
L. Okay, we'll move on. The part number two is just the pressure at the end of the heat rejection process. That would be 0.4 right here if we're at a temperature of 20 degrees C and it is a saturated liquid, right? Remember those property tables that we've been doing? If I know it is saturated liquid and I know it is at 20 degrees C, uh, then I would go to the temperature table or the pressure table and the pressure would be PSAT uh, at 20 degrees C of 572.1 572.1 kPa. 572.1 kPa. Okay, so so sometimes with these refrigerators and heat pumps, um, instead of just giving you the QL or QH, or sometimes there's a, another way to find QH or QL. Uh, many times it is M delta H, so M H two minus H1, and this one, it is that way. I don't know if there is a way to, to, to go about it doing this. Uh, the, the, possibly there, there might be a way. Uh, but, or, if it is a isothermal expansion, it is the mass that vaporizes times the HFG, the latent heat or latent enthalpy of vaporization. Okay, let's move on.